What's going on guys? Welcome to Comical Comments where I talk about comic books and give you full story synopsis and other things and have some fun. At least we're going to try to have some fun with probably one of the most kind of serious comics. Spider-Man comics. Yeah. This is going to be a doozy. Let me give you some insight. Spider-Man has gone from being homeless and fighting criminals for food to being a billionaire. Spider-Man has gone through many different storylines and scenarios, but we're not talking about everything all at once today. This one we're looking at is a bit strange and probably a bit serious. Set on Earth 70237, 30 years in the Spidey's future. He is forced from retirement to protect New York. This story is called Spider-Man Reign. Here comes the plot. Oh man, this is gonna get rough. New York is fairly safe. Supervillain and heroes are a thing of the past. The mayor has a specialized police force called the Rain, who formerly attacked some teens for spray painting a message, Where Did You Go?, which is probably more directed to someone more competent than Spider Man, but who knows? Our story picks up with a late 60s, early 70s. Peter Parker, who works as a florist, how does he go from being one of the smartest men in the DC universe and having a fucking PhD to becoming a florist? Huh. As we sort of get used to this fact, he is fired for sending the wrong flowers to a wedding. Imagine being the world's one of the world's greatest superheroes and just being fired because you fucked up someone's wedding arrangements. He bumps in to one of the fleeing kids who was given the Rodney King treatment. That joke is in poor taste, I am so sorry. On Peter's way home, Peter is haunted by memories of Mary Jane. Now you may be wondering, and those of you who know who have read this comic are gonna know what I'm gonna say. Mary Jane dies from a bad case of radioactive semen after, for every time that Peter and her did the horizontal mambo, it gave her a bad case of death. This is not the, actually the first time this subject matter has come up in comics. You know, remember when Mary Jane had that radioactive baby in, like, I think it was the 90s? Alright, coming up in Spidey's... The subjects come up in Spidey comics quite a lot, but it's a little strange. The mayor of New York, Mayor Waters, announces the web system to protect New York, basically the dome from The Simpsons. Remember the Simpsons movie, they had the dome? Yeah, that's kind of what we're getting here. Peter's place. Peter makes it home. And everyone's favorite fake news supporter, J. Jonah Jameson, shows up to give Peter a hot, steamy package. He also apologizes for year and a years of abuse. And he says he sold the bugle. Bu the, bu 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 the bugle. The bugle. And... <laughs> And Jameson's last two acts of complete and utter nonsense is to give Peter a camera and a black suit Spidey mask. How the hell did he get it? Did he just keep it in his desk or at home? Didn't he hate Spider-Man for the longest? Why do he keep something like that? He also starts a riot. Why would he go outside after just... Why would he just deliberately go out and start a riot? I don't understand. So Peter suits up puts on the mask and beats up some cops in his underwear. It's probably one of the coolest, you know, art stills in that comic. I think it was kind of cool and funny. And he punches JJJ for being such a fucking idiot that he starts a riot and asking if Spider-Man's truly back. Also, the mayor keeps a vegetative supervillain in his room. Why? That's such a weird fetish to have, dude. It's just fucking strange. Shocked for some reason, the mayor of New York releases six of the most dangerous villains in the world just to be petty towards Spider-Man. I have been petty on so many different occasions, but I have never decided I'm going to be super petty to the point where I need to release fucking A-tier fucking supervillains. Also, the Hitler Hustler comes out of retirement just to get killed when his boombox runs out of juice. Should've stayed near the plug, Mr. Z-tier. Spidey's place is shot with a missile, cause why not? Also, he should have been on meds for these hallucinations he's been having, but instead dons a black costume to fight the Sinner Six, who immediately corner him and Craven rips off his mask, disheartening the crowd 
when they realized their heroes should be at home watching Murder She Wrote instead of web slinging to save their sorry asses. Spider-Man is saved last second by Doc Ock's arms. The arms take him to a graveyard to show him his mistakes, I guess. The arms force Peter into MJ's grave to force him to face his demons or perform an act of necrophilia. I'm not sure what the arms were thinking. Not sure anymore. And he emerges with a classic red and blue suit that he buried with her. Cause why the fuck not? Okay, one, one thing bothers me about that. Why did... Why would he bury his Spidey suit with her? That's kind of weird. Is it just a symbol of, you know, he's, he's over it? And his, his wife is gone? I don't... I can't get that. Something happens with JJJ and the mayor. His assistant is now Venom, because, you know, can't have a Spider-Man story this series without Venom for some reason. And he turns people into symbiotes, which probably does wonders for his boss's approval rating at this point. Spidey begins his assault in the building like it's a fucking rampage. The unconverted people use bells to force the invasion back. Out of all the things in the city they could use, they could use so many different things. Stereos, car stereos, you know, stuff. Push, no, just use bells. Bells are fine. Spidey John Cena's The Sinister Six and begins his final boss fight with Venom. Sandman comes to Spidey's aid for some reason, telling Spidey he can Amanda Waller these Z-tier villains. Spider-Man pushes the button, killing all of his rogues gallery, and leaving no super villain for him to fight even if he does come out of retirement. After the smoke clears on the fight, JJ reports that all crime levels are back to where they used to be, and if I remember correctly, back if 30 years passed and, you know, crime levels are back to where they used to be, New York is probably going to get blown up, like, every week now, according to comic logic. Spidey visits MJ's grave, and he states one day he'll give her that sweet radioactive lovin' again, but until then, he has responsibilities. Well, that was Spider-Man Reign. Is it better than The Dark Knight Returns? No, not really. I get it, it was, you know, Marvel's answer to The Dark Knight Returns, because everyone wanted to do a future story or story where a superhero comes back, fights the system, you know, shows people they don't have to be afraid of their governments, you know. And I enjoyed the story for what it was, but it's not as good as, you know, Frank Miller's seminal comic, The Dark Knight Returns. Will I recommend Spider-Man Reign to people who have read Dark Deck Returns and want a more serious take on Spider-Man? Sure. Go ahead. I recommend it. I give Spider-Man Reign 4 Spideys in Underwear out of 5. Alright.